Today you will master making a super delicious whole wheat sourdough sandwich bread. Mmm, oh, look at this crumb. This is amazing. <laughs> it's so fluffy. Just check this out. Mmm. <laughs> this is the perfect bread. There is only one thing to make this even better. We need butter. Some salt. Mmm. <laughs> Mmm, mmm, this is the stuff. Good news, it's very easy to make. Let me show you step by step. All you need for this recipe is a loaf pan, or as we Germans would say, Kuchenbackform. Oh, and of course, a little bit of sourdough starter. It's gonna be a fancy whole wheat bread. Seriously, whole wheat flour has so much amazing flavor. Okay, that was enough sports. Being an engineer, I of course have to provide you with a flowchart for the whole process. So this recipe assumes that you want to do everything on Friday and then have delicious bread on Saturday. But you can also do everything on the same day. I added chapters to this video so that you can skip ahead to the parts that interest you the most. This also makes rewatching a lot more convenient. So we start by mixing all the ingredients together at once. Then we have to knead the dough, which is also called adding dough strength. We extract a small fermentation sample and this sample will tell us exactly when we are done with this stage. All you have to do is wait. Once waiting is over, we have to shape the dough and toss it into our loaf pan. Then if you want, you can proof the dough at room temperature and pick it the same day or you can move the dough to the fridge overnight and bake it the next day. Super simple. And let's get started. Now I love whole wheat because all that bran here, which is from the outside of the grain, is adding so much incredible flavor. I'm adding 500 grams of whole wheat flour, 450 grams of water, which has room temperature. That's around 90% in terms of baker's math. Now the amount of water depends on your flour. I have a full video dedicated to that. Please do check that out. It might be that your flour requires more or less water. This is something unique, which you always unfortunately have to figure out. So don't just blindly trust this value. 10 grams of salt and then around 50 grams of ripe sourdough starter. Note that I'm using a liquid starter, but you can definitely also just use any other starter. The only thing with this liquid starter is that it increases the water a little bit. So you might want to add a little bit of additional flour. But don't worry, I got you covered. I'm going to show you the final consistency that you should aim for with this recipe. Much better than just following exactly the values. Now the whole wheat flour absorbs a lot of water. So it's almost a one-to-one -one ratio of flour and water. But that's also what I love about this bread. The crisp crust paired with this nice, moist, fluffy crumb. I'm feeling lazy today, so I'm just gonna be using my stand mixer. You could definitely also knead this by hand. I got another video for you, five tips to create incredible dough strength, linking it right here. Please do check that out. But you could also definitely just use the stand mixer. You wanna stop kneading the moment you see that the dough lets go of the bowl. That's a sign of good gluten development. Let me knead that and then show you. And this is our dough done kneading. And check this out. This is the window pane effect that I can get from the dough. This is also what you should get. Then you know that you're done kneading. So very important. Also check the consistency. It's nice and stretchy still somewhat. I'm just gonna take the dough and I'll place it on my surface for now because we're going to do some magic. That's also why it's important that the water that you use has around room temperature. We will extract a small piece of the dough and this is going to be our fermentation meter. It's going to tell us exactly when our dough is done with the bulk fermentation, which is what starts now after adding the sourdough starter. So I'm just extracting a tiny piece and I'm moving that to a separate jar. More on that in a bit. Let's first now rounden up the dough. For that, a bench scraper is a handy tool, but you can also just do it by hand. A 45 degree angle, I'm pushing into the dough. And you see, this is why the dough scraper can help because you lose less of your dough on the surface. I'm just nicely rounding up the dough. Now with the dough scraper, And check this out. This is the consistency that you want. The dough nicely holds its, sh its shape. It doesn't spread out too much. I will now take this and I will transfer this to a clean container. I place the dough in a clean container, just like I said, and now the dough is going to sit in here. I'm not gonna be doing any stretch and folds, nothing. I will just let the dough sit like this until I see that the dough here in this small sample jar has increased by 50% in size. So until around here, 
and then we will go back to this dough. And that's about it. That's so easy. Don't rely on timings. Rely on this small jar. It definitely makes you nail every sourdough bread. The trickiest part about sourdough bread is always the fermentation. It's 95% of it. And using this small hack, you always nail it. So this has been closed and see you in a bit. So it's been around eight hours by now. And this has increased in size, not as much as I wanted, but that's okay. It's always better to stop a little bit earlier than too late. We can still improve our dough with the final stage, with the proofing stage. I'm gonna start by preparing my loaf pan. A non-stick vegetable oil really does wonders. If you don't have that, no worries. You can also be using some olive oil. Just make sure that you use a lot because you don't want this to stick to the actual loaf pan. With wetted hands, I'm just going to carefully remove the dough from the edges of the container. And I didn't do any stretch and folds. Check this out, how nice and bubbly this dough is. This was perfect. I'm now going to sprinkle some whole wheat flour here on top. This side is going to be down in a second and I don't want this to stick to the surface. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over the container and hopefully the dough, the dough comes right out. Voila! And now we simply have to shape the dough. I like to take a little bit of extra flour here. And now with floured hands, I'm just taking the dough and I'm putting it into the middle. And this dough is just so puffy. Now, being a German, I don't want to let any flour go to waste. So I'm just taking what's left and then I'm sprinkling this here on top. Now, there are two options. Either you could wait until the finger poke test passes, which is poking the dough and then there's a dent and when it recovers very slowly, then you bake it. But in my case, since it's already very late, I want to bake the dough tomorrow. And because of that, I'm going to put the dough into a plastic bag and then I will let this sit in the fridge overnight. Fridge temperature is around 4 degrees Celsius and for me, this stage takes at least 12 hours. So I'm probably going to be baking this tomorrow for dinner. I'm not going to be using this sample anymore. I will be placing that in my surplus starter jar and bake an amazing slow fermented sourdough bread out of this. So this does not go to waste. Hello again. This is our excellent looking dough. It has been in the fridge for around 12 hours. You could definitely probably leave it in there for a little bit of a longer time, but that's what I love about the fridge. You can decide when you want to bake. The dough is going to be good for 12 hours, 24 hours, 36 hours like this. Not so much when we use a banneton, but this loaf pan just gives excellent support to the dough. That's what I like about making a sandwich bread. I'm just taking a razor blade and I'm going to be doing a small incision in the center. Just brushing off a little bit of that excess flour, putting it here to the side, giving the dough a little bit of a spritz with water. The water delays the crust formation a little bit, which is exactly what we want. This way we will have more oven spray. For baking, I'm going to be preheating my oven with this bowl inside. It can also be out of metal. This is where I'll be pouring boiling water inside. This is going to create a lot of steam. This should be heat resistant. And then all that steam is going to go upwards and it's going to be trapped here below this additional tray. And this makes sure we have a nice and steamy environment for our dough. I'll be removing this one from the oven. This one is not going to be preheated. I'm preheating with a fan for around 30 minutes at max temperature. Now, the best way to know that your dough is done is to use a thermometer like this. This way you will always nail baking. It's sometimes a little bit hard with the bread baked inside of a loaf pan. At 95 degrees Celsius, your bread is done. I'm now using steam because that gives you more oven spring. You definitely wouldn't have to do that. You could also just skip that. But then your bread wouldn't rise so nicely in the oven. What I like to do is the moment the core temperature reached around 80 degrees Celsius, 
that's when I remove the steam component and that allows me to build a really nice crust. Crust is personal preference, some like it darker, some like it lighter, so that also depends on what you personally prefer. 30 minutes at 230 degrees Celsius is a good idea with steam and then probably another 10 to 15 minutes without steam. Let's bake this now. Time to place the water. See you. So one more time, upper bottom heat, not the fan, and then 230 degrees Celsius for the bake. So 25 minutes passed and we do have a situation. We have too much oven spring. <laughs> I don't know how to remove the tray here. It's stuck to the bread. <laughs> Fail. Look at this half time and this is already looking amazing. <laughs> so steam removed and now it's time to build that delicious perfect crust. And voila, another 15 minutes passed. The moment of truth, does this come out of the loaf pan? Ah, ah now it does. <laughs> so how do we know that this bread is done? As I said before, we will just measure the core temperature right in the center. And now check this out. From a visual perspective, from the outside, I would say this might already be done, but the core temperature is still around 12 degrees too low. So this bread is not fully baked yet. The advantage of removing it from the loaf pan at this stage now is that we will have better browning everywhere. So it's gonna go back like this into the oven and finish baking. Okay, so that's a fancy German way of saying, okay, it's like, okay, but with cheese, okay. So. Check this out, this bread is looking super nice. A little hot. <laughs> Let's check the core temperature. And yes, we are now at 95. So this bread is done. What you could do is, if you wanted it to be even darker, you could bake it for more time. Every color on the crust adds additional flavor. But I'm happy with a bread like this. I like my bread like that. I didn't, don't want it to be any darker. Now we're just gonna let this cool down and then it's time to slice this open and check what's hiding inside. I also just realized what I just said might also be coming from a doctor if you think about it. Let's slice this open and see what's hiding inside. Alrighty, let's slice this open and see the crumb of this sandwich bread. I'm just super amazed with how much oven spring this has. Mm, oh, look at this crumb. This is amazing. <laughs> so fluffy. Just check this out. This has got to be the perfect sandwich bread. <laughs> It's so fluffy. And it's also still nice and moist. Mm, I can't wait to try this. So let's taste this. Mm, <laughs> look at this consistency. It's so moist. <laughs> also a nice crisp crust here. Ah, this is the perfect sourdough bread. Mm. Oh, and it just smells so good. Not too sour, slight tang. Mm. <laughs> this is the perfect bread. There's only one thing to make this even better. We need butter. And you see that? I didn't even wait. The butter is coming from the fridge. But I just, I need butter on this now. <laughs> This is so good. I wish I could mail you a slice. Some salt, some salt bay action. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. This is the stuff. <laughs> so there's not gonna be much left in a few minutes, I guess. <laughs> Gluten Appetit, I can guarantee you that you are going to finish this sandwich bread right away. It's so delicious. It's so fluffy, paired with a nice crisp crust. It's the perfect play of different consistency. Then you got that nice flavor coming in from the whole wheat flour, that bread, it adds so much incredible flavor. Paired with a slight tang from the sourdough, this has to be the best bread ever, and really it's so simple to make. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. As always, may the gluten be with you, and happy baking. Auf Wiedersehen, tschüss, bye bye.